And according to my watch, we are at uh, six o'clock uh, Eastern time, Canada, U.S. Uh, so uh, how do we do it, coaches? If you're on time, you're already late. So uh, we'll get uh, we'll get rolling here, and I'm sure we'll have some coaches jump in uh, as we get we're going along the way. So uh, welcome to everybody. First of all, this is uh, second of series in drill drawing uh, that uh, that we're doing. The first one was uh, an advanced drill drawing clinic. Uh, for uh, more advanced drill and show you some different techniques. Today, we're going to look at uh, some mid-level stuff. Uh, but as we're waiting for other coaches to join us, I'm just going to share my screen right now and just go over uh, the calendar feature. So again, today, uh, this, this is for everybody, like coaches that have been with us for a while and then coaches that are just uh, getting going with us. Uh, so this is, um, uh, to some, some of the coaches may not be familiar with all the features or how they work. So I'm just going to uh, share my screen right now and uh, share the, uh, the app. And uh, I'll just give you a little tour here. So uh, okay, thank you. as far as format, I would just uh, ask, uh, ask the coaches right now to mute their mics if they could. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different than the first one where this is going to be an open format where coaches will be able to, you know, talk to me, talk to each other. And uh, we'll go through the first part of it and then uh, uh, get over through the things we want to talk about. And then near the end, then we'll open it up and we'll have questions. And there's also the chat possibility as well that um, uh, if you uh, don't want to be on YouTube, if you don't want to be a YouTube star, uh, just let me know <laughs> or just send your questions along by chat because we are recording this uh, today for the coaches that couldn't join us live. Uh, a lot of our European coaches, of course, would be pretty late there right now for them. Uh, so uh, uh, if you don't want to have your face seen on that, you can turn off your, your video or like when we're asking questions, you can just ask them uh, just with audio. You don't need to be on camera. Uh, so first thing I want to talk about today is, is the calendar feature. So on the main page, top right, okay, so we have the calendar up here and open up the calendar. So it looks like this generally, like just a few things about the calendar. First of all, it's multi-team that you can add uh, different teams in here. And these teams are all teams that you have added in your roster section. Okay, so roster section, for you not, not familiar with it, if you go into the settings area here, and you go over down in the bottom here where it says roster, okay, we open up that, and these are all the different teams that I have rosters for in my, in my, uh, my coach vision coach here. So this would be my U20 team, okay, this would be all the players. So these would be the teams that would show up Okay, this would be the teams that show up in that section of your calendar. So let's focus on the under 20 team. Okay, today we are November 25th. And this is my sister Monica's birthday. So happy birthday, sister Monica. And you can go a month, you can look back in your calendar and you can look ahead. So it's very useful in doing your planning. You can set up as, as far, almost as far ahead as you like. Uh, we're going to focus on practices on Friday. So now, once we open up, this and we're on our team. If we go down to a package list and maybe we already have a package, so let's uh, let's call this uh, Thursday's practice. Okay, so we're going to take this practice here that's already been created and we're going to drop that into uh, for practice tomorrow. Okay, so we flip over to the 26th, which is Thursday, and we can move this around in here. We can move this to whatever time. Let's say that we're going to we're going to practice at uh, six o'clock. Okay, and then I can also add notes to it. So. For example, if I want to have a video session beforehand, I can create a video session here. Okay, and so that's going to be more of a, a technical thing. So I can color code that whoever I want, and we might make this a pregame. Okay, and uh, we're going to do that. So practice at six. So let's do that around five o'clock. Okay, so that everybody can be there. Okay, and then I hit save. So right away, I have my video up on my planner and I have my practice here. And you can see down on here that I've got a red dot here. Okay, which is probably not, it should probably be like a technical one, a blue dot, but uh, you get the idea. You can put in wait lists, you can put in bus times, you can put in whatever information you want to place in there. Now, uh, coaches have asked like, okay, so I want to change it or put a different practice in. How do I get rid of it? Well, if I click on that practice, okay, you'll see down here where it says remove. So that's just going to remove that practice from the calendar. It's not going to delete it from your packages. So I'm going to remove that package. Okay, I'm going to remove that practice, and I'm going to remove that video just to clear that whole day off. Okay.
Okay. So I'm going to clear that out of there. So when I go back to uh, my normal, the main page here, and I look down at my package list bar, you'll see that my Thursday practice is still there. So this is how you would go about editing that. If you wanted to change that, you would open up the Thursday practice on here, take drills out, put drills in, add a roster, whatever you want to do. And that's where you would do the editing of your, of your drill right there. So that's just a little, a little quick uh, run over on, the, uh, on the, uh, uh, the calendar part of it. So uh, right now, coaches, let's get into the things we want to talk about today. So uh, the first things that uh, we're going to do is uh, take a look at the animations and how the, the search function works. Okay, so if I'm going to go and look for drills, I open up my animations and that shows all of my drills here off on the side. But there's two ways of going and searching for drills. I can do it by name or I could do it by tags. So this is where the tags come in very handy. That uh, levels and tags, let's say, for example, I'm looking for a drill that's uh, for 13 and 14 year olds and for 11 and 12 year olds. Okay, so I would close that out. And then I would go into my tag feature here and I would look for drills that I want passing and shooting and skating. And you can see each time that I touch uh, a tag, drills disappear. That means that that's eliminating drills. So it's an exclusive system. So every time I add something to it, okay, things go away. So for example, I have this. So these are the only drills that have all these six, uh, all these six uh, um, tags on it. So this one here, this, this particular drill right here, this would have all of those options on it. So that's the way that you can go quickly through and sort for your drills. And the other way that you can look for drills, and one other thing, coaches, if you find that you're missing some drills or you can't see your drills at all, it's usually because you have some tags open here on the side. As long as you see these blue dots open, that means that you have tags open. That means that there'll be some drills that you won't be able to see as long as those tags are open. So we're going to take all the tags off of there, yeah. all of our, all of our uh, drills. So I'm going to search this series by name. So we're going to do the breakout, uh, breakout basic series, as I'm going to use an example today. So I would just put in a keyword, and I'll put in basics. So you can see right away, so all these ones here have the name basics in it. So these are all brace, breakout basics. So we're going to take a look at how I, I build the drill, like a mid-level drill, and how I duplicate it and create different variations off that same drill. So let's take a look, first of all, the drills we're going to be working on. Okay, so we'll take a look first of all at this cutback basics. And this is, this is a good drill for uh, peewees, uh, bantams, maybe even novices to get them looking at uh, uh, the timing and how we do a breakout. So I'll just run the drill here in, in 2D quickly. So D1 steps up over the blue line and backs off. The coach is going to chip one deep. Okay, player one comes in down the dot line. And as soon as one cuts back, number one heads for the wall, takes a pass, and then he's going to come up just around the circle and shoot. So this would be the first in this long line, a series of these breakout basics, where this is just, you know, it's the forward reading, the timing of the defenseman, the defenseman cutting back. Okay. Now, and the next part of that would be the wheel. So now we're coming in from the other side um, and going into one-on-one. -on -one. So it starts exactly the same way. Defenseman steps up over the blue line. They chip it. So it looks exactly the same. But this one, the time the forward's coming in that way. But as soon as that forward uh, commits to the wall, the defenseman's around, and it's back in the other side. So as the, as the coach, you call that. You can call that cutback, or you can call that wheel. Okay? And we go through and start building, uh, building our thing. So let's take a look at a two-on-one. Okay? So, again, starting the same way. One starts off. And this way, we, we progress through the drills, through the one-on-one, 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 oh, one on one, two-on-one. So both forwards come down the dot line. This time, it's a wheel play. The wheel side forward goes to the wall. The center player comes along low and slow. They're about out over the pack and then back in two-on-one. On one. And that's going to progress down to a three-on-two. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So the way that I go about that is, first of all, for a series like this, I would create a template. So this is what the template looks like. So everything is based off of this. Okay, so I would create this template first of all. Okay, so everyone, every one of these starts pretty much the same way with the shoot in. And then right here, a defenseman has options. So what works really well uh, for, for this is when you're doing a series of, uh, of drills is if you could create a template, okay, and then copy it and work on the duplicates. So now what I'm going to do is, so I think most of you by now, 
would be able to do like this much of it as far as long as you are in coach vision. So what I would do to do that first part, that breakout drill, is I would take this, and down here you have this duplicate feature, which is very, very useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a copy of that. Boom. So now you can see that this is on the copy because it's tag copy. And now I could do my editing on this and start building my, oh, I click on edit. Okay. And right away, I'm in my, uh, my editing uh, drill. Uh, yeah, Coach it, Rhino, it, if you could just uh, click it, off, but that would be great. Uh, okay, so when I want to start editing, I just I, I click this on here and we get into editing mode. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the. This is going to be cut back one on all. So what I'll do is I'll go into action mode, and you can see right away that uh, the player is going at 20 kilometers an hour, so he's going full speed, and that's okay. Uh, I might change that down to 14 just to slow him down on the pivot here after he's picked it up and the uh, default speeds and I'm just going to drag that player in he's going to fake like he's a wheel and then he's going to cut back the other way out the other side okay now into a passing position now this is where the timing comes in of everything so now with player one I want that forward to drive down the dot lane because if that player wheels he'll be coming across this way but if he cuts back, back well, I'll show you downstairs because Bar will be here so, okay, so I'm going to start with number one coming down the wall at about 14 kilometers an hour. Okay, I can set the default speeds what I want. And uh, I'm going to, first of all, move that timing point because I don't want that player to leave right away. So as soon as I activate number one, you can see down on the timing line here that, is, that the timing point is activated. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to drag this player along. And you can see as I drag the player along that that player is ad advancing. So this is a timing issue now for the forward. So when is that forward going to leave? Well, I would say probably, probably, probably the forward's going to leave somewhere around here once that, that defenseman gets into the dot. So now I'm going to drag this forward down. He's going to come right down the dot line. Okay, he's going to cut in. So he's ready to go either way right now. And as soon as that player cuts back right here, Okay, I'm going to sort of half pivot. I hit my backwards pivot, uh, my backwards skating here, and I'm going to drag that player in such a way that the player opens up to the wall. Okay, and then I'm going to hit forward. And then I'm going to pivot back to forward skate. And this is where we start to adjust the timing. Now, when I click on number one, you'll see, when I click on number one, you see this gray dot appear behind uh, where number one is. So that tells me the position of number one player at exactly the time that number one is gonna make this player keep skating. So these little gray dots behind it are very useful. Now to make a perfect pass from this distance, I would typically wanna have the gray dot about, about two yards or two meters behind him somewhere around here. So the way that I could advance that gray dot is I just move the player a little bit more. And you can see it as I, I advance the, the player number one, that gray dot's advancing. So right there, that gray dot is about two meters behind number one. So I know when I make the pass, that that player and that puck are going to arrive there exactly the same time. So you should see no slowdown in the movement of number one. So my suggestion, coach, is for passing. It always works best when the, when the players are going their default speeds. Now you can choose up here in the left, 10, 14, or 20, depending on the, the breakout, depending on the age of the players, their positioning. But if you adjust the, the position of the player, of the passer, the, the software will adjust the speed of the player automatically. And that's where the gray dots come into to use because if that gray dot is just behind the player when you make the pass, then the player and the puck should get there at the same time. So I'm gonna click pass, I'm gonna click Okay, uh, this player is like too early. Let's set this one, go ahead a little bit. Okay, and we'll pick pass. And what's it telling me there? I can't read it. Okay, maybe a little bit further. Maybe let's have like that. Me wants to go, maybe go a little bit further. Okay, so it just wanted me to get a little bit closer there. So it was telling me to adjust it. So you can see here that gray dot has moved up a little bit. So that means the pass should be perfectly on time. So this one is just, this is the one on no drill. So this player is just coming around now and going to shoot. And this defenseman is just going to come up right here. Uh, 
And actually, okay, so, uh, and then, yeah, we'll just have this player come up and then just pivot and go back and line up. Okay, and then pivot back to forwards. Now, that's a lot of drawing. Typically, I would check my action after about every three or four movements that I make, okay? So even I get caught coaches, so you don't want to get too many uh, moves ahead because your undo button only goes back 15 moves. So let's just take a look at the timing of everything on this, what we've drawn so far. So this is the template up to here, and we'll just take a look at the timing. So you just see number one coming down. He's down the dot line, ready to go, but he cuts back, so he opens up to the wall. And then you can see there was a mistake right there. I don't know if you caught that, but you can see this is great. Okay, so watch number one coming in and watch one's pivot. That's a good pivot. But then number one turns their back on the play right here. So we don't want that. So that's going to happen sometimes when you're drawing a pivot. It's going to pivot the way you don't want to. So how do we correct that pivot? So we want that, pivot, we want that number one player to pivot to their right, okay, to, to stay with their eyes on the puck. So what I do is I go back into action. I click on number one. I go back to the last pivot that they made right here, okay? And this gives me the option of pivoting right or pivoting left. So this time I want that player to pivot to the right. So I will click right, and now we'll go back in, and I'll check that action again. So this time we'll see that the, we, hopefully we'll see that uh, player number one is going to pivot uh, with their eyes on the puck. So number one pivots the correct position. He fakes a wheel, cuts it back. Number one pivots, and then pivots back again to the right, and then the puck is on the stick and coming to the net for a shot. Okay, so, so far we're pretty good. So now in a shooting action, okay, so let's have, we have a right-hand player coming in here. When I click to shoot, I'm gonna click the player. I'm gonna click shoot and I'm gonna to touch the net. Okay, so that means that player is gonna score a goal. So now coaches, you have, a, you have a, a choice here. So when I go down onto the timing line, you see this black timing point that it created down here. When I touch on that, I have a selection of, of shots. By default, it's always going to be a wrist shot, so you don't have to touch anything. And, and it's probably a good idea they're shooting wrist shots anyways. But you have a snapshot, you have a slap shot, and you have a backhand shot. Okay, so let's say this player was on was a, a left-hander and you want to have a backhand, backhand shot, I would choose backhand. But because he's at the top of the circle, I'm going to make a big slapper, okay? And then I'm going to come down, and I'm going to stop at the net. Okay, so let's just take a look at the last part of that and we'll put it in 3D. So I'll just slide this across here and I'll move this up just so we get the breakout and then the shot. So now I'm gonna start this playing here, the fake, drops it back, opens up, takes it, comes around the circle and then the big slapper right in the back of the net. Okay, so that's essentially the one on O. So what, what I would do then is now to save that drill, I click up here, I click save on the top part of it. I can adjust how much that I want to show on this by, by moving the time ladder just by clicking on it. So I want to show most of this drill, okay? So I'm going to show the max of this, and this would come in, it would look like that. So that would show you the whole drill. So now when I'm happy with the picture of the drill, then I press done. Okay, so now I come up here and I'm going to correct, I'm going to correct uh, uh, on the editing part of it. Okay, I'm going to correct, uh, get rid of the copy part of it. And uh, we'll call this uh, Breakout Basics. And this is uh, 1v0 curl. Okay, I would put in my description here. Okay, stay, pass, shoot. Okay, key points. Hit the net. Okay, and then this is coaches where I would put in the level of this, and this one would probably be, this is a pretty basic one, so I would say this is 11 and 12 and 8 and 10 year old. And then I would also go down into my tags. And on my tags, I'm going to make this, this is a passing, a shooting, a skating, and a warm-up drill. Okay, I need, I would need probably four, uh, Probably two, minimum of two forwards, a two defense, and one goalie to run it. Fitness, not so much. I'm going to put two on that. Technical, not so much. Maybe a one or a two. Tactical, maybe a one. 
And then uh, for a fun, as all you guys know, all my drills are five for fun. So then I would save that drill. Okay, so I would save that drill and then that would go into my, into my uh, animation folder. So that would be into my animation folder. So this is the one right here we just created. And now if I wanna go and edit that, so everything is saved on that. So I'm just gonna to touch on editing an existing drill. So say for example, I wanna go in and edit this drill and I want to, I didn't, I, let's say I forgot to create a template of it. So I would go back into this drill, okay? And I wanted to turn it into a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so what I would do is I would go into action mode and I start winding this drill back. And the way you do on that is I start from the last action. So I would click on number one. And because the undo button isn't an option now, because you've saved the drill, but you, you can still edit it by using the timing point. So I would go down the last timing point. I would click on it. I would remove it. And you can see that every time I remove a timing point, it goes back. So now I'm going to remove the shot. Okay, so now that puts me down to here. So I'm going to create a one-on-one. -on -one. So now what I'm going to do in action mode is instead of that, that player coming in and shooting, I'm going to have that player coming up and around this group of players and then back down here one-on-one. -on -one. So I also have to edit number one, the defenseman. So I click on number one, and then I would just, again, work from the back end forward. So I would remove the number one, remove the last pivot, okay? And I would probably remove this, this other pivot here to the point where the, the, the defense makes the pass. So now I can adjust number one to make him step up and do that one-on-one. -on -one. So now I'm gonna have number uh, defenseman one, one follow that player out to the blue line. And you can see as I advance, I know exactly because of that gray dot, exactly where uh, forward number one is so I can time it. So number one might be a little bit fast. So I take that last timing point and I slide it to the right and you can see player, the forward one advancing just to slow that player down a touch. Okay, and now I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna pivot right here. Okay, I'm gonna go backwards. I hit my backwards key and then I drag the player down. And then now I wanna be right in this player's face right here. So now I can adjust this, the, the timing down here. If I can speed him up or slow him down, you can see I can adjust that a little bit there. So I have him right in his face. So now that forward's gonna come in. Okay, maybe, maybe about here. And I'm gonna have that forward lose his puck. I'm gonna have the defense and make a play. So for the forward to lose a puck, I use my dump key and I'll just, I tap it out over on the side and I click on the X. Okay, so that means the player just lost the puck. So now I have to adjust the timing of number one. So number one is going backwards at 14 kilometers an hour. So I'm gonna have that number one come back, okay? And right there, okay, I want number one, right here is the same time as number uh, forward number one. So you can see the gray dot is there. So if I move this last one down, right there is where that poke check's gonna be, right there, okay? So that's when he's gonna lose the puck. And then I just can complete that a little bit. I just drag one back a little bit okay he's okay he wins the battle i click forward he's going to go back into line and number one okay having lost the puck feeling shame comes back picks up his puck okay and passes it to the coach i click pass i click the coach and then i go back and ready to line up so let's just see what that looks like let's see how my timing is and again, this is coaches. This takes a little, ex a little experience. It takes some timing to work on things. So we'll just watch it in 3D, see what the timing is of everything. So this is a youth drill. So these players aren't moving that fast. So he comes down and there we have, boom, there's the poke check right there. And we've got our one-on-one -on -one finished. So again, that's where I would go back into now to save the changes that I made. I would click save. Okay, I'm gonna click probably max again. Maybe not quite max. Let's see, 14 seconds. Maybe I'll show, yeah, about this, this much of it. I'm done. And then I would just, uh, I would edit the name of it. Back to one-on-one, -on -one. okay, one-on-one -on -one, uh, curl. Okay, and then I would save it. Okay, and then I'm done. Okay, so that part of it's done. So that's how you edit an existing drill. So. Now, for example, I want to do a two-on-one. Okay, so the two-on-one, I would start the same way. So I would go down to my template. 
I would go down to uh, uh, my bake out, right, my template right here. Okay, I'm gonna create another duplicate. Okay, so now I'm on the copy. So here's the original template and here's the duplicate. So remember coaches, when you create that template to create a copy, and you can always go down and it saves you a heck of a lot of time when you're creating a, a drill series like these where the drill keeps building as you go along. So now I'm on my template. And now we're going to do a wheel. Uh, the, the first two on one you saw where the defenseman is going to wheel. So this time, this, uh, this defenseman, again, we're going, to, we're going to do this one at full speed. Okay, so this one, this defenseman picks up the puck and he's wheeling behind the net right to about here. Okay, and I'll have him make the pass. Let me just, uh, yeah. And uh, we're going to have the forwards come down the dot lines. So again, I, cl I click that forward. I click the first timing dot, and I'm going to, again, have those forwards start driving down that lane when that defenseman gets to about here and turns. So then I'm going to have number one drive the dot lane right down the middle and probably slow him down a little bit, okay? Because he's not sure at this point which way that defenseman's going. Okay, so I'm just going to slow him down a little bit right here because we want that player's coming in a little bit slower. Same with number two. So I'll move that first timing point. Again, coaches, unless you move that first timing point, that player will start skating at zero seconds. So I'm going to move that first timing point along to the point where number one starts skating, so both forwards start at the same time. Okay, you can see number one moving. So I'll start number two, and number two is going to drive down the dot lane right to about here. And at this point, okay, the defenseman's partner or the forwards will be yelling, wheel, 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 so that everybody knows what's going on in the breakout. So I may be going to touch, slow that forward down a touch. Now, with defenseman two, he's committed to the wheel. So now defense, this, this, this forward two is going to come in down here. I click backwards skate, have him pivot, eyes open to the passer, opening up. And then pivot forward, back to forward. So he should be making a left-hand pivot here and coming up the wall right here. Now, again, when I click on number one, I can see that gray dot is about three meters behind. So he, the, that number two is a little bit too far. So I have two options. I can redraw number two or I can advance number one. So let's just advance number one a little bit until that dot's about two meters behind him right about here. And then I'll click pass, okay, and I'll click two. Okay, so now we've got the pass. So now we have to time our forward number one. So number one is yelling wheel, wheel, wheel. So we want number one coming down low and slow through the slot. Okay, right here. So right here, he's a little chip option. And he's also below number two, so our timing is good. So now we'll come up here, and right there, you can see the gray dot disappears under two, so we know what they're there at the same time. So if I want to make a relay pass to number one, I want to make that pass out in front of number one right here so that number one does not have to slow down. So what I'm going to do is just advance number one a little bit here, the passing position. And when I click on number two, you'll see where that gray dot is. So let's just see if we can make that pass on the backhand. So I'll click pass. I'll click number one. Okay, so it's going to allow us. So you'll see that the software will slow that player down. And then we're just going to have these forwards go out around the circle and back in. And I'll have number two go back out over the circle. And I can see exactly where that other player is. There's the gray dot right there. So I'm not going to go offside. So I'm going to come in right here. Now, if I was to go over the blue line right here, I'm going to be offside. So what I have to do is slow player two. So I'm going to take number two, take the last timing point, And as I slow that down, Okay, as I slow that down, you'll see number one come across the, the, the blue line. So now we should be okay. So now they're back in and back in, okay, on the two on one. And the defenseman, okay, the defenseman is just going to continue up through the, through the middle. Probably slow the defenseman down a little bit right here to about 14, okay, and then come up to the middle, up towards the blue line, pivot up at the blue line. Maybe slow the player down a little bit more, okay? Down to about 13, and then pivot backwards, okay? I'm going to drag it so it comes the other way, and then bring it down. And I want that player one to be right there. So now I take that last timing point, 
and I just adjust it so that my timing is perfect to finish that two on one. So let's check, let's check what we've been drawing so far. Okay, right from the start. And again, this starts with the, the same template. Everything starts from the same way. So this is how you build your drills and this is how you would build a series of, of, of drills that are, you know, you're adding on to each one. One on O, one on one, two on one, three on two. And you can see number two is on side and then speeds up and we're good to go. So that would be the two on one. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you in this series right here is uh, I'm just gonna discard that, that beautiful drill. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And I'm gonna show you a three on two. Okay, so this is, this is what you wanna to progress to coaches. So this is again off the same template right from the start. But this time we're having two defensemen come up and pivot. And just the timing of everything. Now that's a little dump pass behind the net there. And now the, the forwards are gonna come out, make a quick regroup this time, three and one cl uh, close, everybody's on side and we have three on two going back in the other way. So I'm just gonna click out of this, uh, out, stop sharing for a second here, uh, coaches. And uh, just to make sure that we've got uh, everybody, uh, I think we've got everybody online here, great. And uh, anytime you can, again, we have uh, some things in the chat. So uh, uh, if you have questions, uh, like now is a good time, uh, you could just turn on your mic and uh, you can just shout them out uh, or, or whatever or send a chat. So um, that's, that's uh, as far as using the duplicate key and how to build a drill like that, that's good. Now, if you have any specific questions, like on, on, uh, on, on, on the drill drawing, drill creator or whatever, uh, just, just flip open your mic and uh, we'll get you going. Okay, and I think I think I scared everybody by telling them we're going to be YouTube stars. <laughs> so uh, don't worry about it. So let's go back and let's go back into the app, and I'm just going to give you another little uh, uh, example here of a passing sequence. Okay, so go back into the app, and we'll uh, we'll get rid of that drill, and we're just going to create a new drill. Okay, so again, when you open up the app, this is what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna create a new drill. We're gonna create a new drill, and I'm gonna create an animation. Okay, and to get things going, I just tap on the screen to open things up. Now, I'm just gonna do a, a, a little quick uh, example of some different things that you might not be aware of. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add two players. I'm gonna add a left-hander, and I'm gonna have a right-hander. Now, one thing you may not be familiar with coaches is the labeling system. So as you add players, they're gonna go three, four, so it's just gonna keep adding them. Okay, to get rid of it, I just click on it, click the X, and click on it, click the X. Okay, so now I've got my two players and I'm gonna add a puck. So I'm gonna show you a couple different, different things here with passing technique. Okay, so I have two players and a puck, so we're going to action mode. So when I click on number one, because that puck is in the circle, I can take it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make a bump pass, okay? So I'm gonna have this player come up. Okay, I'm gonna have him come up to uh, the blue line and I'm gonna have him put a puck off the wall, okay? So I'm just gonna, I click dump and I'll touch the wall where I want the puck to touch the wall. And then I'll have where I want the puck to finish out in front of the player, I'll touch X here. Then when I wanna fix it, I'll click on the X here. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna have number two, and because number two is gonna start at zero seconds as well, I'm just gonna have number two skate on an angle, okay, beside number one, and he's just gonna skate up on an angle and come onto that puck, and then when the puck comes onto the center, you can see the take sign lights up, I take it, okay, and then I'm down into the zone down here. And number one, I want number one to cut in behind number two, so I can see where that gray dot is. So if I was to cut in right here, I'm pretty much going to run into that, that player. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So this is very useful to use that, uh, the uh, gray dots. So we have the dump pass, but number one cuts in. Hey, he might have missed him, but that was a little, little tight. Okay, so he wouldn't probably cut that close. So what I have to do is I go back into action. I click on number one. Okay, I click it 
undo. And now what I can do is two things. I can, I can make a harder cut. I can cut a little bit right here. You can see that gray dot where it is and then come in behind, number one, and then come up the blue line where I'm not going to be offside. Or I could just slow the player down. So those are two things. So that's basically how to make a dump pass off the wall. And if I want to come in and make a rebound shot, I would come in like this. Okay, let's say I want to make it off a goaltender. Well, I would use my dump key, and I'm going to shoot it to the outside pad. So I'm going to have my goalie standing about here. I'm going to click it there and have the, the rebound, big juicy rebound, come right out into the area here. I'm going to click down here, and I'm going to have number one skate onto that rebound. So right here, number one's driving the dot lane. So there's the shot. So here comes the player one into that right there. You say the take sign light up. Now, okay, the timing is pretty good because if that player was too fast, it would tell me up here that the player is too certain. I would just have to slow the player down. But as it is, now I can take it and I can shoot it and hit the net. Okay, I click the net and it's a shot. And we'll just leave it as a wrist shot. Stop at the net. Okay, and stop at the net. But now I have to add some things. So now I have to add a goaltender. So I'm going to put it in my goaltender, and we'll make it a white goaltender, and I'm going to label the goaltender as a goalie. So again, on the labeling system, coaches, you can go left or right to put letters on it, left defenseman, right defenseman, goaltender. I'm going to put my goalie down. I have to tap on my goalie, and I have to spin the goalie around to face the correct position. And then I'm going to put the, 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 the goaltender back in the net right here. Okay, so now with my goaltender, I'll go into action. I'll click on my goalie. Okay, and then I move that first timing point. I'm going to move that first timing point to the point where that, that goalie is going to come out and challenge that shooter. Right about here. Okay, and then I'm just going to move that, that goalie out just a little bit. Just so you can see where that intersection or where that rebound is going to be. Maybe slow the goalie down a little bit so he's not moving too fast. And let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so we'll watch it from we'll watch it from the end zone. And again, coaches, you have multiple viewing options. So we'll start this uh, we'll start this uh, playing from the end zone. So here comes our two forwards. They have the chip off the wall. The forwards down. Goalies out off the pads and the wide open back door rebound scoring chance. So those are a couple different options for using uh, the dump key, okay? How I would use that. And you can use it by hitting the post the same way. You use that dump key, you can put it off the post and have that and then finish with the X wherever you want to have that, all right? So next part of this, I'm just going to just add on to this. I'm going to add another left-hander, okay? And uh, we'll label that one uh, left-winger. And I'll put a right, I'm sorry, I'm going to put a right-hander. I'll click on that one. Make him a right-hander, and we'll go back this way and make that the right winger. All right. Now, I'm going to add a puck. And a little tip, coaches, drop the puck on the ice, click on the puck, and then drag it in onto the player's stick. Because sometimes when you try to drop it directly onto the stick, it just, it just lights up the, the, the forward and you have to do it again. Okay, so let's do a little passing sequence. So I go to action mode. Okay, I click on, on, sorry, I got that as a right D. I want to change that. So I, I, to change that, if I realize I made a mistake on that, he says right D, I go back into optics. I go right away to uh, this one right here. So I light up the player. And I'm going to make that, uh, let's see, we're going to make that a left winger. Okay, so you can see it's a left winger now, and we're good to go. So in action mode, I light up the left winger. I'm going to take the puck. Now, very simple sequence, just skating up the ice with the puck. I'm going to start skating up the ice with the puck, and my right winger is going to be right beside. So you can see, as I advance the right winger, the gray dot is right there. So at this point, when they're pretty much side by side, they're there exactly the same time. Now, coaches, what you have to understand and think about is that if I was to make this pass right now, the software would allow me to do that, but it's going to slow that player down. Let's just show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to pass. I click pass. I click the player. Okay, I'm going to move ahead. I'm going to draw the left winger directly uh, beside. Okay, directly beside 
number number two. So I'm going to make another pass. Okay. Uh, it's not going to let me do that. I'll do a little bit further. Okay, and it will stop at the blue line. But what you'll see, coaches, is when I make when I go to play it, you're going to see the right winger slow down and then speed up, and then the left winger slows down. So you see that back and forth because when I take a look at that, you can see that they're making flat passes. Okay, so it's not it's not it's not like it, how it should be on the ice. So let's use our undo button. So we'll go back and back and back and back and back and back. Okay, we'll go back right to the start. Okay, so we have we're going to start with the left winger skating. So the left winger is going to skate at 20 kilometers an hour. The right winger is going to skate at 20 kilometers an hour. Now, right there, they're side by side. They're there at the same time. But I want that player to make that pass out in front. So, again, I'm going to advance the right winger a little bit. And when I click on the left winger, you can see that gray dot is a couple meters behind it. So I make my pass. I click pass. I click the player. I'm going to advance a little bit. And now I advance my, my left winger. Again, there they're side by side. I can see the gray dots, so I advance a little bit. I click my right winger. I click pass. You can see where that gray dot is behind there. I click the right winger, the left winger, sorry. And I come up, and I skate up. And if my timing is correct, you see the angle of the passes, coaches, where it's like on the ice, where you have to lead the player. So you have to make that pass out in front of the players. So when I go back and play it now, and we'll play, it in, and we'll play that in 3D, You'll see that the players, there's no change of speeds. That the players are going up nice and smoothly, and there's no change of speed, and the timing is perfect. Okay? So uh, we've been at it now, coaches, for pretty much just about 45 minutes. Uh, so I'll open it up to, to, uh, to, to questions now. Again, just, uh, again, open forum. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, uh, just uh, fire on, turn on your mic, and... Uh, let her rip. Come on, Peter. This is the first time I've ever heard you quiet in your life. You must have a question someplace. Sorry. For me, yeah. Um, regrouping. I was, I was doing a drill before and... Uh, I was finding that everybody was just going at the same time and it was going too fast. Yeah. But I think you've kind of covered it on, on how to use the timing bar. Yeah. To just slow it down. Sure. And you can do that two ways. You can, you, can, uh, move, you can move the player and then on the time, you can, on the time dot below the last timing one, you can slide a little bit to the right to slow players down or back to the left to speed them up a little bit. So if you find the players a little bit out of positioning, out of position, you can adjust their speeds a little bit with the timing dots down below. Just move that last timing dot, or if you want to redraw it, you can also change their default speed if you need to slow a player down. Right. But I, I find the easiest if you're timing like three players crossing, okay, just to, to adjust their timing points, and that's where the gray dots come in really handy. And let's just slip back, Aaron, and I'll just show you a quick regroup, okay? Okay, so we'll just do a, a quick regroup. So I've got a lefty, a lefty, and uh, my righty here. Okay, and I'm going to put a coach on the wall. Okay, and with with a puck. Okay, we'll give the coach a puck. All right, so we're just going to do a little quick regroup drill. So we go into action mode. I'm going to have the players come down as if they're on a, on a, on a four check. Okay, let's just say we're on a one, two, two, four check. And they're going to they're gonna close things off to the wall here. And they're closing off to the wall. And my, my right winger is coming down on the other side here. So I'm going to slow that right winger down a little bit by moving that last timing dot. Okay, same with uh, – I'm going to move them down to about 13. Same with uh, player number one. Just so that the, the forwards are pretty close to being on that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do right now – so just imagine there's a pass back here. So the coach, I'm going to take it. I'm going to add one timing dot to the coach, and I'm going to move that just to the point where the coaches are starting to force that, that player on the outside. And right here, 
Okay, I'm gonna use a, a little dump key and I'm gonna dump a, a, a puck in behind it. Okay, so now player number one, he's gonna come back, pick up that puck. Okay, he's gonna turn it up the middle. And now this is where, okay, so that's gonna be the principal action. Now I have to make everybody else fall in the line. So now as I, as I move number two along, you can see that gray dot of number one, where number one is during, and this is how you use the timing dots of it. So I'm gonna come in and right there, he starts to turn it up. So right here, I'm gonna to start to turn up ice right at this point right here. So we're gonna be pretty close to on the same time. So number three is coming in. So there's, so number three is gonna come out to the wall. Number three is gonna pivot backwards to keep his eyes on number one as number one comes across, maybe drop down a little deeper and then turn it up ice with the front one here. And again, you can see that gray dot disappear. So everybody's on the same, same time. So when I play that, so they start out here, little one, two, two, both chip, regroup, on time, pivot, open up, and then everybody's heading back the other way. But this is where those gray timing dots are very useful to see the positioning of all the other players on the ice. So then you can adjust their timing accordingly if the player's a little bit out of position. Okay, uh, I hope that uh, hope that helps, Peter. Yeah, that's great. Much better understanding. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody else uh, out there right now? But uh, anyways, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, Darian, uh, Jr., you guys are good. If not, I will, I will just say uh, thanks for, uh, for dropping in on this, uh, this webinar. And uh, uh, we look forward to the next time. And uh, again, we uh, really appreciate uh, your support for Hockey Coach Vision. And tell your friends, great Christmas, great Christmas gift. Anyways, happy uh, Thanksgiving to all the, the Americans out there. And uh, stay safe, stay well. We're going to get through this and uh, have a great season.